In this lecture, we will go over the level 1 reading on international trade and capital flows. Here are the sections in this reading, international trade, restrictions and agreements, balance of payments and trade organizations. Let's start with section 2, which gives us an overview of international trade. We'll go over some basic terminology, talk about the patterns and trends in international trade, the benefits and costs of international trade, this is important, and then comparative advantage and the gains from trade, this is also very testable. Basic terminology, GDP and GNP. In the previous reading, we talked about GDP or gross domestic product. This is the final market value of all goods and services produced in a domestic economy. GNP is slightly different. With GNP, we also consider the income or the output of foreigners in the country and we subtract that out of GDP. And then the income produced by nationals of this country who are abroad, that income is considered and it is added to come up with GNP. So if you are to come up with a very basic equation or relationship, GNP is equal to GDP minus the income of foreigners in this country plus the income of citizens of this country who are outside the country. There will generally be a difference in GDP and GNP for countries like Pakistan where a large number of Pakistanis are working abroad. Next piece of terminology is terms of trade. This is simply the price of exports divided by the price of imports. And here the price is based on an index. We don't need to get into details here, but the high level point is that if this ratio goes up, then that means that there is an improvement in the terms of trade because this ratio is telling us about the price of exports per every dollar or every unit price of imports. If this ratio was originally 1.1 and from 1.1 it goes up to 1.3, this means that the price of exports is going up relative to the price of imports, which is an improvement from the perspective of a particular economy. Trade surplus and deficit, we have talked about this briefly before. If a country has high exports relative to imports, then we say it has a surplus. Otherwise, the country has a deficit. And we'll see this in more detail over the rest of this reading. Autarky. Here is a term that you might not have seen before. And autarky is closely related to what's called a closed economy. If you have a country which does not trade with the rest of the world, it produces goods and services and then the goods and services produced in this country are also consumed in the country. Then we say that we have an autarkic state and the economy is closed, closed in the sense that it does not have any trade with the rest of the world, no imports, no exports. The opposite of autarky is free trade and with free trade we have an open economy. If we have a given country and this is the rest of the world, free trade means that this country trades freely with the rest of the world. It easily sells goods and services to the rest of the world and goods and services from the rest of the world easily come into this country with little or no restrictions. Trade protection even though there might be trade with the rest of the world, at some point or some countries put some trade protections. For example, some countries might impose tariffs or quotas to encourage local exporters. There might be export subsidies. And these are items that we will cover later in the reading. FDI, MNCs, FPI, these are a few other important terms. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investment. 
with foreign direct investment companies or entities from the rest of the world invest in our domestic country and build factories for example these are investments in actual companies or investments where there is a certain amount of infrastructure involved a classic example would be if you have a german company that builds a textile factory in india that would be an example of a foreign direct investment and typically it would be multinational companies that engage in foreign direct investment fpi stands for foreign portfolio investment so if an investment management company in america put some money in the indian stock market that would be an example of fpi or foreign portfolio investment section 2.2 talks about patterns and trends in international trade and capital flows the curriculum says a fair amount in this section but i will summarize the main point which is that over the last few decades trade or global trade has increased substantially if we look at the overall world in this time in the 80s 1980 to 1989 the trade as a percentage of gdp was approximately 37.2% and in this period 2000 to 2006 that number went up to over 50% which is a substantial increase and if we look at the graphs here on the left which show trade as a percentage of regional gdp and if you look at this solid line which represents advanced economies then this number is increasing so you see the number going from approximately 25% to over 40% that is the main point here and another larger point related to this reading is that there is a tremendous amount of detail which i will not be covering in this particular lecture what i will do is go over all the sections but emphasize the points which i think are most testable and i will do that based on the learning objectives and the sorts of questions that i see in the curriculum and in mock exams moving now to 2.3 benefits and costs of international trade and this is quite testable so you need to remember the benefits and the costs the big benefit of trade is that countries gain from exchange and specialization if a given country is good at producing cloth and another country is good at producing machines then it makes sense that the country which is good at producing cloth specializes in this area and then exports cloth to another country whereas the country which is good at producing machines should focus on this particular industry and then export machines to the other country when we talk about gains what we mean is that for a given country there is a higher price for exports relative to selling internally in other words if this particular country sells clothes internally there is a certain price that is received but if this country sells clothes in the international market then it receives higher prices also with imports if this particular country imports machines and can get machines at a lower price when it imports relative to producing internally then that also is a benefit of trade so if either of these two situations occur then we say that a country is benefiting from trade as might be obvious from this discussion industries experience greater economies of scale if a country develops its clothes industry further it is already good at producing clothes but it expands this industry then the costs can go down further due to economies of scale household and firms have greater product variety if material goods and services are coming from other parts of the world then clearly consumers have more variety and hopefully lower cost also competition is increased and resources are allocated more efficiently 
when there is competition, then companies in a given country are also competing with companies in the global market. And that will force companies to either become more efficient or go out of business. There is greater employment in exporting countries. There will be, in this example, more employment in the clothes industry because this industry will have expanded. What are some of the costs? There is the potential for income inequality, both within a country and across countries. People in industries that are doing well will tend to get higher income and also countries that are good at exporting material they have more efficient industries and export more the income of those countries will increase faster than the income of countries which are not as good at creating goods and services there will be a loss of some jobs because less efficient firms will be forced to exit if we take this country which is good at producing clothes then the industry over here that produces machines will suffer and we'll see this in examples later this is the example that i want you to focus on though and we will actually do it together and this material is quite testable consider two countries that each produce two goods Suppose the cost of producing cotton relative to lumber is lower in cotton land than in lumber land. And just to visualize this better, here are the two countries. This is cotton land. This is lumber land. Initially, we have a cotton industry here and a lumber industry. And here also we have a cotton industry and a lumber industry but as you can imagine the cotton industry here is very strong in the sense that this country is good at producing cotton the cost of producing cotton is relatively low this country lumberland is good at producing lumber the cost of producing lumber is relatively low initially both countries produce cotton and lumber and then consume internally but what will happen if these two countries start trading with each other how would trade between the two countries affect the lumber industry in lumberland if these two countries start trading then clearly lumberland will start exporting lumber to cotton land because this country can produce lumber at a lower cost so the lumber industry will grow what about the lumber industry in cotton land this industry will actually shrink because lumber is now coming from lumberland what would happen to the lumber industry workers in cotton land in the long run in the long run people from this industry would have to be retrained because this industry is shrinking so these people would have to be trained to work in the industry that is actually doing well and that industry is the cotton industry not explicitly stated here but you can see that cotton land will start exporting cotton to lumber land so this particular industry is going to do well this is an important question what is the meaning of the expression gains from trade gains from trade means that overall the two countries are better off if you think about the consumers the consumers in both countries are now getting better cotton and better lumber but this does not mean that everyone or all stakeholders are better off clearly those in the lumber industry in cotton land are not better off at least in the short run and those who stay in this industry in the long run will have lower incomes similarly those who stay in the cotton industry in lumberland are also worse off so again i emphasize gains from trade does not mean that everyone gains 
it means that on average the countries gain. What are some of the benefits from trade? And here you can regurgitate material that we saw on the previous slide. And I will just read out a basic segment from the curriculum. And I also want you to read the solution from the curriculum. I have covered the main points, but it would still be useful to go through this example in the curriculum. For question five, the curriculum points out that there are gains from exchange and specialization based on relative cost advantage. They are gains from economies of scale as companies add new markets to their products. There is greater variety, greater efficiency and so on. In any case, these are items that you need to remember because this material is testable. 